everyone, my name is Jewel Burks, co-founder and CEO of PartPick. PartPick is visual search for replacement parts. Our mission is to seamlessly facilitate the search and purchase of parts using computer vision technology. If you needed to find this part, how would you describe it? You might say it's black, it's rubber, it's kind of squiggly. The words that come to mind won't do the trick. In fact, if you search for those words, Google will return 2.7 million results. Reality is, text-based part search sucks, which is why most people call into a distributor or hop in their car and head to the nearest hardware store for help. While I was working as a sales supervisor at McMaster Car, one of the top parts distributors in the country, I heard people ranging from do-it-yourselfers to seasoned repairmen struggle to describe the parts they needed to buy from us. More than 40% of callers did not have a part name or number to search with. So, armed with this 15-pound McMaster Car catalog, and their potentially limited knowledge of a given part, our sales reps set out to help our customers. This could mean long, frustrating phone calls, which often led to incorrectly ordered parts. An incorrect part delivered meant the customer's project was on hold for at least another day. Productivity stopped. Then they called us again, and they yelled. Then we had to go through this. We've integrated our technology into mobile and desktop applications for our first pilot customer, National Builder Supply. Let's take a look at how they will use PartPick to improve their customer service experience. Switch to the Elmo. Hello, this is Jason Crane with the National Builder Supply. How may I help you? Hey, Jason, how's it going? Um, I was calling. I'm working on my toilet, and I need a part. Um, I'm assuming you don't know the name or the part number? No, I don't actually. No problem. We have an app for that. All you have to do is download the National Builder Supply mobile application, take a picture of the part. Please switch to Elmo. Switch to Elmo. And, and let me know when you s send the part to me. You should see my name in the sales rep. Jason, right? That's it. OK, I'm sending it now. Awesome. It'll, be a, it'll only take a second. Looks like PartPick found a match. You have a total toilet connection hose. Yeah, that problem. sounds right. I'll add it to the cart, and you should receive it tomorrow. <laughs> Please switch the slides. Awesome. So you may be wondering, how do we plan to get all the world's parts into our database? Switch the slides, please. So far, we've manually input parts using a light box and camera phone to mimic the lighting conditions and picture quality of someone in the field. Moving forward, we will utilize an automated conveyor belt system that can take multiple pictures at one time of a given part and enter it automatically into our database. This system will enter up to 1,000 parts per day. And eventually, we will deliver this in a box to suppliers to enter their own parts. This is great because we have a lot of work to do to get all of the potential customers into our database. In fact, we already have suppliers that represent over 10 million parts interested in using our technology to sell more. 
we will charge an initial setup fee for the part ingestion process and an annual fee for the licensed technology. We are excited to help the $122 billion parts distribution market sell more and increase efficiency. The major players in this market are over 100 years old and, quite honestly, have been slow to innovate and make life easier for their customers. Their customers are comfortable with visual search since they've begun to use it to do things like snap a picture of a check to deposit it. It's time for the parts distribution industry to retire its 15-pound catalogs and adopt PartPick technology. We're excited to launch PartPick today to take the hassle out of the part search process. We're opening up our beta list for suppliers and distributors to sign up on our website, and we invite you all to the Startup Alley to see PartPick in action. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Judges. So, so how many customers do you have to sell to? I, I tell you you're selling to the actual manufacturer of the product, or not the manufacturer, you're selling to the distributor? Yes. So we're starting out with distributors. If you can slide over here. Um, we're starting out with distributors and suppliers of parts. We actually um, looked at things like fasteners, screws, bolts, nails, washers to start, um, and then transition to plumbing parts with our first pilot customer, National Builder Supply. So we're actually utilizing our potential customers to grow the database and, and move on that way. So how, how, many, how many of these companies exist? Yeah, so if you're talking about maintenance, repair, and operation parts, which is where we started, there are about 40 large distributors like McMaster, Granger, in that category. Um, in plumbing, there are hundreds of others. And then we've also looked at automotive. So that's kind of where we're moving, moving forward. Because everyone basically says automotive is what they're really interested in. So that's where we're exploring. Um, moving forward as well. Um, I think you were the first person to actually describe your background and why it's relevant, so great, great job. That means a lot to all of us here. Um, I was just thinking about all the ways that I would use this, so I think you, you did a great, a really great job. How, how many um, different parts do you need to have in your database before it becomes really usable by, by you know, the world? Yeah, so the great thing is that we have a plan for scaling and getting millions of parts in the database, but what we've seen from working with customers is that actually a small number of parts represent most of their sales. So for example, National Builder Supply, they sent us a box of 100 parts that represented 80% of their sales, or actually parts that they get calls on. So what we're doing is really mitigating some of those calls that they get in from people saying, oh, I have this thing, but I don't know what it is. Um, so we're actually able to help our customers by looking at their business need rather than just entering all the parts at once. And how do you prevent your customers from becoming your competitors? Good question. So one thing is that we understand that this is a really hard problem to solve. Visual recognition is not easy by any means. Luckily, we have PhDs from Georgia Tech who have been able to figure this thing out. Um, so we don't think that people in the parts distribution industry are going to you know, just decide that they want to take on this huge challenge of recognizing parts visually, um, we believe that they'll pay us to do that. I love it. I think it is a great problem that you're solving. Can you dive into your technology stack and how you actually solve this problem? Sure. So I will actually hand that over to our CTO, Troy, to, to dive yep, in. Yep. So but pretty much what we did was take uh, different descriptors, local descriptors that describe the part, and also we take global descriptors that describe the overall maybe shape of the part or things like that, combine that, and feed it in to do a uh, fingerprint on the part. From there, we did a uh, clustering technique to be able to cluster up uh, different parts to do, mitigate lighting conditions, uh, situations where you have deterioration on the part and things like that to try to mitigate those type of uh, things on the part. So that's pretty much how we did it. So you're using a distributed system to be able to do uh, clustering and uh, computing on that part. Um, first of all, great presentation. And it's great to see you're disrupting a very traditional industry. So well done on that. I I'm just really curious more about your channel and distribution strategy. So uh, you mentioned you've already got partnerships in place with a couple of organizations. But could you sort of go deeper into that and what your plans are around there? Absolutely. So as we mentioned, we've already had a lot of interest from distributors and suppliers who are wanting us to take their parts and put them in our system. Um, so right now, we're kind of just fielding that interest. Um, we are 
trying to figure out what's the best way to go to move forward with the technology. Like I said, we started out with fasteners because we felt like if we could identify differences between screws that look quite similar to the human eye, then we could probably take the technology into a lot of different industries. So now we're doing testing around things that are much larger, like alternators for cars, um, to see how quickly we can train our algorithms to be able to recognize those parts. And then next question, it's more around your slide deck. That machine where everything was sort of rolling through on the conveyor belt, is that sort of your machine and your product? And yes. Yeah, so you're that, using that to sort of uh, create your database? Yes. Yeah, so that's one okay. of the things that we're, we're fundraising to be able to build that out. We've gone, yeah. gotten through the prototyping process for that. Um, and now that's kind of our next phase to be able to get more parts into the system more quickly. Because th that to me is also quite interesting. Yes, we think so. Maybe something in that as well. Absolutely. So. absolutely. Yeah, you should make that clear. That's your machine. Yeah. I didn't yeah. realize that. that. That's, that's, that's your, pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Can I ask him, you, you, it's pretty disruptive technology. Why wouldn't you just sell the product directly and bypass having to sell to these distributors? Sell the pro product, product directly to... In other words, go directly to consumer and buy, you know, plumbers and whatnot and say, you can buy the product from us, you don't have to worry about wrong products, you know, because the time is a big deal for them. Absolutely. So the big thing is, from my experience working in the industry is I have no desire to touch parts. I don't want to be having a big warehouse full of parts. It's a, it's a great business. They make a lot of money, but that's not where we want to sit in the business. We want to really be the technology to help power um, that business and help them keep up with you know, the Amazons of the world who are entering the business um, and have more technology that they can utilize. Do you guys have any plans to work 3D printing into the mix, where you identify a part and then here's the schematic and you print it out? That... So absolutely. We get that question all the time. Um, I think that for now, we do want to stay focused on the imaging in terms of understanding what makes up a part visually. Um, but we have even started talking to 3D printing companies about maybe partnering um, and once we recognize it, sending it to them to print and send. So that's something that we've definitely thought about. All right, well, we're out of time. That was part pick. Awesome, guys. That was, that was really